Hey everybody. Let me know how the sound of me works. Um, it would help if I started the captioning. I sound much better. <laughs> that could be uh, okay. <laughs> uh oh. Well done. Can y'all read that? Did I get a real mic? You know what? Maybe my laptop is just having a good day, Pi. Okay. <laughs> Music is louder than me. How's that? Is that better? I'll sit up and try. Hey, Gaiki, thanks for the host. Um, okay, so <laughs> weird things happen to your brain when you like take a break from being nonstop, like all the time. Y'all know that feeling like you're just so used to going, 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 and then you stop on purpose, like you stop. And suddenly your brain can't process like basic timeline information. <laughs> you can't like, you don't know what you're doing. I promise. I knew this stream was coming. Uh, block, oh, block, block, block. There we go. Um, yeah, I promise I knew this stream was coming, but I also took days off work this week. So my sense of urgency in the days and all that, it just went away. It's, it's quite impressive if I may, you know, say so myself. Um, of course I see spots on my glasses. Don't tell the, uh, optometrist person that I, um, uh, don't tell them that I wipe my glasses on my shirt. It's, it's way overdue. I was talking to my daughter, my oldest, the grown one, and telling her like the only time that you can take a break in my job, the way my job currently manifests. Um, Tony, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, the only time in my job is maybe toward the end of summer and maybe over the winter holiday break, the winter break. Other than that, if you don't catch those two windows, that's it. Like there's no time to take off. I, to tell y'all, um, are we calling people booty holes in chat, Darcy? What? <laughs> um, but yeah, so if you don't take time off in those two very small windows, in my job, the way it currently is, you just don't take time off. Like, that's just it. Um, it's embarrassing to tell people how much vacation and sick time I have. That's just, I mean, I, y'all ain't even hearing me because y'all too busy calling each other names in the chat. I see how it, I see how it goes. <laughs> um. <laughs> yes, everybody say hello to Color Me Taco because she needs love. And, you know, to be seen in this, um, in this day, we need to, we need to make sure we acknowledge her. See, Gaiki, you are such a, 
I was about to give you all kind of credit, Geiki, like usual, like you're my savior and, or maybe that's Tig, I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm messing around with my chats because it looks, that's a little bit better. Uh, my captions, because it was um, looking kind of suspect. Thank you, Gaiki, for you. You aren't wrong. I have a lot of time off. Like when they pay me <laughs> to leave this job or when I leave this job, like months, months is what we're talking about. Uh, well, you gonna get the love, Darcy. So, you know, <laughs> poor thing. So y'all doing okay? As I, t <laughs> yes, judge. Um, y'all doing okay? I am completely out of sorts. Like this week I orchestrated it on purpose. So my time off from work would coordinate with when my kids aren't here. I have no work to report to. I may have checked email once or twice, but that's shh, it's fine. Um, so I have no, like, I have no calendar <laughs> in my head for what's going on. Um, no one runs like Moon. No one. <laughs> Just putting that out there. Um, I did because I forgot to do something on Friday. And so I know this, this other individual was depending on me to get back information to them before they could take their next step. And it's kind of important. So I was like on Monday, I was like, oh shit. I, mm. um, but yes, so I did that. I also may or may not have checked to see, I don't want to go in on Monday, not knowing what's coming, like the avalanche of work and email and I don't I don't want that in my life yes I don't know I mean isn't that what a stream is for <laughs> like to tell on yourself like all of social media is telling on yourself oh Geiki I was supposed to have balloons oops my bad um yeah, I was supposed to have balloons today because it's my birthday this week, y'all. Ba balloons. Two O's. Balloons. <laughs> yeah, it's my birthday this week. Um, so I, you know, in celebration yesterday, uh, we were, I was supposed to bring, the shoes aren't here. The shoes aren't here. I probably will get them Thursday. The shoes are not here, so y'all gonna have to wait till next week. The birthday month can continue. It is okay. <laughs> I don't really follow the is it astrology, whichever one does the signs. Um, <laughs> small fee. <laughs> this is why we can't have nice things. Um, yeah, we're not talking about shoes on parallels. We do have parallels coming up. By the way, hi, my name is Kalia. <laughs> it says right there in big letters. Um, wow, how did you do that, Kaiki? <laughs> um, so my name is Kalia. I am part of the Dicey Amazons cohort of women. Uh, this is my show, uh, a blurt of this and that. I am the blurt of this and that. Spoiler. Um, I want to know how there's a reverse emote in the chat. Like, I, I want, how do I have that in my life and why don't I already know about this? <laughs> I could have been judging people from both directions, just like in real life. Can modify sub emotes. Okay. All right, I will, just like in real life. I could be doing that. Oh, y'all can't see my shirt. I'm wearing a, a Star Trek shirt, Quark's Bar, um, because Deep Space Nine. Um, 
Yes, both directions. You can't be one dimensional in a uh, one dimensional in your um <laughs> can't be one dimensional in your judgment. You have to be equal opportunity. Uh and I am kind of talking to y'all a little bit differently rather than just going into my rants and news and whatever because I wanted to do today a little bit different. Um I wanted it to be more of a conversation. I want to chat with y'all. I do have things. I actually did not plan a rant today because I um, I didn't feel like the world is really shitty. and <laughs> I didn't want to bring the shittiness into my birthday week. Does that make sense? I mean, I'm sure I'll rant just because I'm me, but I didn't want, like I had this whole, I did, y'all, I did so much like research. I know stuff that I never, like I probably should have known, but didn't know. And I just revolt. Oh, Tony, what's my favorite Star Trek series? That's hard because all of them have their own their own reasons for being amazing because I am the ultimate Trekkie. Like, it's a thing. Um, and, and so I don't know. And, and full disclosure, I've not seen the new one because, you know, if somebody wants to give me a year subscription to CBS All Access, then I'll, I'll be able to watch the new Star Trek Discovery um, but I have not seen that one yet. Um, so that's, that's like, you don't ask, I mean, everybody has their favorites, like obviously Picard, but I really love Cisco. Um, and, but then, you know, like, I like all of them, all of them have their own merits and I get frustrated and excited about all of them for very different reasons. Um, Y'all won't let my birthday week be non-judgy. I mean, I've ranted in my head, but anyway. Anyway, so I just wanted to talk to y'all because it's my birthday week. The whole week. It's the end of July is Kalia's birthday week. And I wanted to chat with y'all, maybe talk about myself a little bit more personally than I normally do. I mean, obviously, I... Um, um, I you know, talk to y'all about stuff I like, like comics. And I, I really do think it's important to stay up on the news. I don't always enjoy the news. News causes adverse reactions in brain sometimes, but, um, but that's not really me. That's, that's a piece of me, not all of me. Um, so I thought I would talk to y'all a little bit differently today. Maybe be brave. <laughs> Who knows? Have some therapy because, you know, the Internet is here for our therapy, right? Social medias. Um, yeah, so I'm just not going to do the whole ranty part. Y'all can have the rant for this week, next week. Um, heard a couple of residents arguing about Kirk versus Picard. Janeway fools. How do y'all always forget about Cisco? Like, he was amazing absolute phenomenal in the way he approached problems in his subtle um i could kick your ass but i'm just gonna tell you and look you very purposefully in your face like cisco was amazing um d space nine came before voyager pie uh, nerds um Um, yeah, so I really, I really love Cisco. Janeway had her things, um, obviously Picard, even Kirk with his whole fornicating self <laughs> had benefits. Oh, <laughs> don't look. Yes, you get the judge. You get the judgy face because you got your order wrong. Hey, Tig. I'm glad you're here, because 
Hey! Didn't start for me, had to open it and waiting. Yes, Kirk's born and Kate Nash. Y'all know who I'm talking about. <laughs> you're, you're like 20 minutes. Cross isn't even here yet. Nobody's late until Cross gets here. So that's that's the rule. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're just going to uh, kind of not do my whole half page rant thing that I was researching and typing up because... Yeah. So much, right, Tig? Like, why they acting new? Like, they ain't never seen the original series. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Every week. <laughs> oh. There is nothing saying he can live his life, but we gonna call a fornicating a fornicating, right? <laughs> like, he, he was living his best life all around like the whole everywhere this sh where no man had gone before <laughs> that's where kirk was going <laughs> Whew. yes um yes and i will always love the original series for uhura always always like if i could be in y'all if i could be anybody on tv which totally wouldn't work because, you know, but yeah, she's amazing. I love that y'all have let me talk about Star Trek for like 10 minutes. This is great. <laughs> yes. Like none of the other series, although um, for me, Guinan in Next Generation, uh, yeah, in Next Generation was pretty close. There is nothing comparing to Uhura. Um, but Guinan always, like, I love Whoopi Goldberg for Guinan. Like, just amazing. Um, I'm trying to think of... Yeah, I don't... I enjoyed the other series, but I don't think they had the one character that made me just need to be there you know um okay so what what are we talking about today <laughs> like what's happening um so it's not a rant oh you're right and i just i have he's in my talk today he's one of the things i'm gonna be talking about tig oh my i can't even remember what i oh, planned my own show um, yes, LeVar Burton will be spoken about today because, yes, you're absolutely right. And I am so sorry. I was thinking maybe just women. I don't know. But, um, yeah, Guinan, like, told several people off in several different ways <laughs> throughout that show. Oh, and now I'm jealous. Yeah. You know, I, I, I agree, Pi, like black people on Star Trek are amazing. And I need to see Discovery because the captain is black, I believe. Anybody want to buy me a, um, <laughs> it happens like, you know, every once in a while, like not, I heard it was good too. But yeah, I heard, uh, you know, we agree. Like on occasion, it's, it is my birthday week. Um, so maybe there's that. Even a broken clock is right twice a day. Is that where you going with this? <laughs> mm. So somebody get a sub to uh, CBS All Access and then give me your login information. Okay? Okay. Appreciate it. It is my birthday week. Notice I don't say birthday. It is the whole week. This is my birthday. Um, thanks, Mom. Thank you. Thank you. I will take it. And I'll take CBS All Access. The only reason I want it is because of Star Trek. Oh, 
No. Uh uh. I'm sorry. Love, I would not go back to my 20s for anything in the world. <laughs> like, uh uh. Nope. Nope. Parts of the 30s, maybe. You could do that. I am now, f well, I will be. This week I turned 42. Um, I do not want to go back to the 20s. Y'all just have no idea. Like, there was so much. So much in that. Nope. We're not doing that. We are moving forward. Forward. 20s are a lie they sell you when you're a teenager. <laughs> They're lies. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I appreciate y'all. I ain't going back to the 20s. Nope. Mm -mm. 20s are a lie. Lie. Lie like a dog. Um. Oh, you, you pretend. Like, they'll send you to jail. But that's pretty much it. Like, there's no... Um... Y'all doing the most right now. Um. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, you know, the, they pay bills-ish. My daughter is very hesitant to be called a 20, uh, an adult. She's like, I don't want that. Because she's seen the truth already. She's like, nope, I don't want that. Aw, so I'm just going to sit here and let y'all chat and tell me how awesome I am for my birthday week. That's something I get for my birthday. Yay. Um, not really. Like that would be boring for everyone involved. Okay, like for real, for real, for real this time. <laughs> you know what, Pi? I said, y'all generically, Pi, you're one person. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> okay, so my first amusing, not really ranty um, thing of the day. You cannot share a picture on here because spammers. Nope. You are banned. I will ban you. <laughs> oh, but we, we wait for it, Tig. We wait for it. We get all up in our feelings when we're a kid, all in a hurry. Like, when I turn an adult, I'm going to do what I want when I want. See, they don't tell you because they want you to feel the same disappointment and angst they did <laughs> when they went through it. No, we are not putting pictures on Discord either. I will block. <laughs> I will ban. I will block. Hey, Rogue. Nope. Again, Cross isn't here yet. So, no, nope, nobody's late yet. Um, I will block everybody. Hey, thank you. Thanks, T-Girl, for the resub. That's awesome. Um, I forgot what I was talking about, but I will block people. That's what I put in. That sounds, um, yeah, they, yeah, they, um, Hey, T girl, welcome to my birthday week stream. We're just talking and shooting the shit because you know we can. I promise I do have things to talk about, but I wanted to also talk to y'all. Um, all you have is a poem. Sounds like, um, I think a copy paste into the chat would be, uh, you know, appropriate. We take poems as currency around here. Okay, so that picture right there that y'all now see. 
Yes, although pretty much every description of me that or of Leo's that I've seen, T girl, I gotta I gotta say, pretty much every description of a Leo that I've seen doesn't feel anything like me. Like I, this right here, is the furthest out of my comfort zone. I do not like being the center of attention. Yes, come back, eat, come back, we'll be here. Um, but I don't, like, it. they just sound very egocentric and, and all of that. And I do have my selfish, I am a selfish person. I mean, I'm human, it's thing, but like some of those Leos, yeah, I don't, I don't know what they talking about, but it's not me. Um, so Japan, uh, maybe y'all saw, hey Candy, um, maybe y'all saw Japan, uh, this is their, like from their website, the, their flyer, I don't read Japanese, so I'm just saying that, um, see Gaiki, there we go, but it, like they always make us sound like major assholes, and I'm like, why? No wonder everybody hates Leos. If this is how y'all act, then do better. <laughs> then don't tell people you got it if you're not going to put it up there, Darcy. Damn it, Darcy. Okay, so the Japanese amusement park. Fuji Q. Fuji Q Highland Amusement Park. Somewhere near Tokyo. Y'all hear about this? Y'all hear about what they they wanted, like Disneyland, right? They want to reopen. And so... <laughs> so, but they're telling people, you know, with all the social distancing and everything, that people shouldn't scream out loud when they're on these rides. And that they should, and I quote, um, that they should scream in their hearts. <laughs> like what? You scream in your, scream in your heart. Don't scream out loud. And to prove that this was possible, Two executives got into one of the, the main attraction rides that they have, uh, Fujiyama, and rode the whole way videotaping themselves. It's a pro part of a promo video for the park. Videotaping themselves without making any facial expressions whatsoever. Masks on, no screaming. They are screaming in their hearts. <laughs> Um, <laughs> well, you're going to have to figure it out, Gaiki, because I don't know what the repercussions are, but apparently if you go, and they have some of the tallest roller coasters in the world, right? So you're supposed to go on this, put your life in their hands and not scream because you're spreading the virus. That said... I think y'all would agree with me. Like, I would feel safer in Japan screaming in my heart than going to Disneyland in Florida. Of all fucking places. I think their jump was like 150, 140% in a day. Um, I'm not going to Disney, Disney, whichever, what, which one? I wrote it down because I always forget which one is where. Disney World in Florida. <laughs> Just eat the food and buy some Pokemon things. <laughs> Who? um, yeah, we're, we're all staying at home. But if somebody was like, you have to pick. I'm like, I guess I would just be like screaming behind my mask in Japan because there's no way I'm going to Disney World right now. 
I'm not setting foot in Florida probably for another two years. And it's a shame because I love the beaches. I have some great pictures on Florida Beach. They're amazing. But no, Florida people can't act right. Neither can Texas and all the other places. Screaming in my heart. <laughs> yes. No. But all the whole country of Japan had less than a thousand cases of COVID. The whole country. Less than a thousand cases. The U.S. We're number one. We're number one. <laughs> I like I like Florida beaches. I don't. I I don't. I've never lived in Florida, so I haven't had to deal with Florida. I just I went with my daughter and then I left. Now every anybody who comes in now is late. Cross is here. <laughs> They cross. That's <laughs> everybody has a price, Geiki. It's important to know yours. Um, yeah, y'all should buy some dice because they're beautiful on Dice Envy. Um, and then you get ten percent off. Yeah. So, uh, the executives of Fuji. What is it called? Fuji Q Highland Amusement Park, somewhere near Tokyo, have created a request that people scream in their hearts to avoid spreading COVID 19. There you go. That is your hilariously ridiculous news for the day. Again, I'm not ranting. Cross, you haven't missed anything. We've just been shooting the shit. Um, and I, I'm, this is my birthday week and I don't want to rant, at least not because it makes me mm, aggravate me. <laughs> well, good. You're all set in practice then cross. <laughs> um, all right. So real quick, uh, shout out to WNBA. They, the first game, which is just hilarious that sports is baseball is a apparently going to a 60 season game. And for those of you who think like I used to follow baseball, I don't anymore. I don't follow any sports really anymore. Um, but they went from 160 some odd games to 60. So it's more interesting for the people who care, but the fact that sports like is continuing on is just in uh, interesting to me. Um, Let's see. <laughs> Japanese public could probably trusted to at least comply. Americans would be but my rights. Yeah. America The US is a Dave Dave Chappelle skit talking about fuck your couch. That is the US walking up in your house, kicking your shit. <laughs> like that is the US. Hey, Omar, you made it. I'm so happy to see you. Yes, welcome. I'm so glad you made it. Shout out to Zay for bringing you here. My mother is um, texting me, y'all. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so I'm going to put this one picture up. Okay, because this is this is my birthday week. We talked about this. So this is my gift to y'all. Did somebody say nobody called you, Google? Okay. Let me see. I think. Can y'all? No. Can y'all see? Y'all can't see that. Um. I'm adorable. I am adorable. Um, lower the bra. Oh, see, see, this is why I have y'all because y'all help me be a tech genius. Does that work? Hold on, I'm gonna get it. 
Look at how cute I am. Oh my gosh. We do not have to throw it in Discord. I am freaking adorable. Thank you, Omar, for the, helping me be a tech genius. I appreciate it. I'm going to get that t-shirt made. Um, okay, so the WNBA, y'all. <clears throat> yes, I'm adorable. Um, uh, his, their first game, New York Liberty player Lashia. Lashia? Lashia? Y'all know I don't know people. Lashia Clarendon said they're dedicating the season to Brianna Taylor and walk the fuck out for the national anthem part. What? I appreciated that. Yes, tech genius. I just got to figure out the acronym for the tech part. That's all. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm excited about that. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I, anytime anybody uses their platform, you know, I'm all good with it. Okay. And since it's my, um, yes, um, uh, it's, it's absolutely remarkable and remarkable in the worst way, right? That, um, they named a law after her to prevent it from happening again. Well, to make it happening again more prosecutorial. I know big words. <laughs> and have done nothing to bring her killers to like justice, right? Um Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I really appreciated the WNBA for using their platform. Uh, like, it makes no sense on so many different levels. Like, she was chilling at home asleep, and y'all walked into the wrong house. I can't. Okay, I said I was not going to rant. I was not going to rant this week. This is my birthday week. We are keeping things positive and light and funny and family. And that's, that's what we're doing. We're not ranting about the world because the world make me curse and say bad words. And I like cursing, but I like to do it when it's fun, not when I'm irritated. <clears throat> okay. All positive energy. And that was positive energy that they put out there. Um, and because it's my birthday week, we're going to talk about, um, classically notated as feminine hygiene, but really anyone, whether it's cis women or, um, trans men, anybody who has to deal with a menstrual cycle, right? Um, because I want to talk about some black owned companies that are putting effort into women's health. Black women owned all of them. I'm excited. We gonna learn about vaginas and safe things. And it's my stream, so y'all can't tell me not to. <laughs> um, so the first example, yes, all black owned companies. I got three example, uh, three options for y'all. There's a few others, but these are ones that I could confirm, right? Um, uh, so this is Ruby, Ruby love. Um, they focus on making leak proof, uh, like underwear and swimwear specifically for teens, but for anybody, um, because the founder who is crystal, y'all know, I don't know how to pronounce people's names. Crystal Etienne. It. I'm sure if I was French or still in Louisiana, I would know how to pronounce that. I don't know. Crystal, that's her name. Um. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> Wait a minute. I'd stop looking at chat for a second. Um, candy calling clear. I got nothing. All I got is a text from my mama with my baby picture. What? The female body. Ooh. Vaginas and ovaries and uteruses. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> yeah, so with these names, <laughs> I'll put it in chat and y'all tell me how to phonetically, uh, pronounce it. Hold on. That's her last name. I've been watching it, y'all. I've been watching it because I don't know why Streamlabs hates me, but... <laughs> nope. Nope. Guess what? Gay people have vaginas too. Geiki. So, this is relevant. Menstruation. Ovaries. <laughs> Crystal, <laughs> Tony, you are useless. Useless. <laughs> I have, I have, I don't push anything though, Cross. Like, I don't push anything. The only thing I have set is for the slideshow. Like, I have no idea why it does that. And I keep meaning to look into it, but um, I forget. Yeah, anyway. So thank you, Tony, for helping me with her first name. Um, her last name, however, um, you seen it? What did you seen? I'm phys I'm psychically doing it. I'm psychically putting myself on mute for my own stream. That's weird. Twitch Geist. I think it's OBS because it's not like. I don't know. Anyway, um, so this is the founder. She's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I still don't know how to pronounce her name because y'all are no help at all. Like, no help at all. Um, but yeah, so if you know any young person, um, cis, trans, doesn't matter, and they have to deal with menstruation, um, they have leak proof swim you can just buy bottoms you can buy like a bikini you can buy a whole one piece um they do uh, underwear and a whole bunch of other stuff as well i'm feeling judged and i feel like it's my birthday week and y'all shouldn't judge me i don't i have my notes up Et Tien Etien Etien Etien. Thank you, Cross. Being useful, unlike the rest of the chat. Um, so this is Miss Etienne. Thank you. <laughs> um, y'all can't all agree now. We sat for five minutes waiting for waiting for pronunciation help y'all can't take credit now yeah that's it i see you candy um so she started the company in 2015 if you're looking for an active young person not active who has to deal with menstruation um by all means check them out the website uh that's the website where um I mean, they're so cute. Yeah, period swimwear. It's great. Um, now you're just showing off. Like, why do you come to my stream and be all rude? Like, 
World Chocolate Day, and I don't have my menstruation anymore, and blah, blah, blah. I'm waiting. I have the fan going right now. Ugh. One day, I will not have to deal with the uterus. Right? Cross. Okay. Uh, Next up, y'all probably heard, maybe heard about this one, Honey Pot. Um, they do uh, more on the hygiene side of things rather than wear. So, um, like pads, tampons, cups. Uh, if you prefer cut menstrual cups to pads and tampons and all that, all natural, all chemical free. Um, started by this is this is my face. This is the judgy face. Yeah. Um. So Honey Pot was started. Did I write down when? I don't, I didn't write down when, but it was started by B. Dixon. Um, Another beautiful sister. Actually, I don't know how she identifies, but a beautiful person. Um, And like I said, they're more on the typical stuff you would buy from like always and all of that. Except chemical free. Um, You're not just kidding. I see. I see y'all. Um, yeah, but that's B Dixon. So if you're looking for a natural alternative, um, and want to support a black owned company and you have to deal with menstruation, honeypot, they, when, uh, she caught some, um, I don't know something. I didn't really look into it cause I'm a support black. I don't know. Somebody like said she was being racist or something. I don't know. It, it, it was not what they were making it out to be. I know that much. Um, and in response, people went to her website and she sold out of everything. Like stuff went on back order for weeks. Um, their products are carried some, I don't know if they're on target commercials. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't, I can't help with that. Um, you have to do some searching on it, Pi. I'm honestly not sure exactly what happened, but I do know that her response to it, I, I liked, and I love the support of the community going to buy all of her stuff. Um, so yeah, she has like all the traditional things you would think of when you think of menstruation, she would do that. Um, and the last one is, don't you love the not so subtle picture? Um, I think it's pronounced couche. It, um, they had it so it looked like it might rhyme with day. Um, but this is like for feminine washing for, wait, did, did Geike really go away? Wait, hold on. I just realized I haven't seen Geiki in a minute. I mean, granted, there's not much, you know, for him to say, but I just had to go look. <laughs> like, they just went away. Like, that's hilarious. <laughs> I'm almost done. Geiki could come back. You might have sisters or like you know women or you know people who deal with menstruation like these are still (laughs) yes he did um oh tony came back too look at you i knew y'all were around here somewhere um This is information for y'all too. Y'all know people who have uteruses in menstruation. Dang it, y'all. Um, so this last one is couche. They're more like uh, the washing care and everything. They were started by Dr. Barb. 
um, a f and a pharmacist, uh, uh, Dr. Barb, that's the only name I could find on their website specifically. So I assume that's how she wanted to be referenced. Um, and her and a pharmaceutical sales rep named Kimba, she calls herself the natural diva. Um, the website says they're the only line of feminine hygiene products created by a gynecologist credentials, right? Um, <laughs> I mean, well, you know, yeah, that's not like chat is really talking about it either, you know, so there's that and they, they've got the requisite parts. Um, so yeah, they have, do I have another picture? No. Okay. All right. But, uh, Couché is, um, yeah. So this is the first time that it's apparently been, uh, created with a medical mindset gynecologist, again, all natural, um, care products. So like for our thicker sisters, if you have, um, or not sisters because thick people come in all genders, uh, for chafing, for cleansing, for sensitive soap. If you have sensitive skin, um, Couché might be an option for you. So that's three black women owned, um, uterus and other things related products. So, and then the next thing, wait a minute. Oh, hold up. Hold up. I may have messed. <gasps> no. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That's fine. We're going to figure it out. What did I do? Yes. Come join us on Discord. I did not put it in there. Wow. Okay. I guess I'll be talking about that next week. It was really good, too. Oh, well. All right. So we'll move on. Um, I was being a forgetful tech genius. Um, oh no, nothing to be shy about. Uh, like over half the world's population deals with menstruation. Like what? Uh, so. <laughs> Wait, I think you what? What did you <laughs> Skitty Jesus, I wasn't ready for that. Is is that skiddly boo? <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> Far from shy about it. <laughs> oh my god. Who? And want a cousin or flow, like whatever it is. I'm like, take it out. <laughs> take it out. I don't want it, don't need it. Who? Um, and just for a moment, let's talk about autonomy. Oh, I guess I see ranting just comes out. Let's talk about the autonomy women should have over their own bodies. We're not just talking about reproductive. Well, we are talking about reproductive, but expanding it like to young ladies, women, legal age who know they don't want children and the doctors will not perform um, like a tube tying or whatever on them until they've reached a certain age or have at least two kids. Women do not have the power to walk into most doctor's offices and say, please take away my ability to procreate unless they're past a certain age or have kids. You know, early on, if you're even in the realm of possibility for procreation, like way early. Um, hey, cello, you're late because Cross got here before you. Put it on a shirt. What are we putting on a shirt? Hold on. Skiddly boob. <laughs> Is that what we're putting on a shirt? Um, you might want them later. There are so many ways to take care of children. Not all of them require you birth them through your vaginal canal yourself. What? 
Um, yeah. So there, there you go. Mini rant. Devious map it left, but that's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That, and that's, it is like nothing is linked there. The social value we put on women, cisgender women, hetero, well, yeah, just cisgender women specifically, that their value was intrinsically linked to marriage and kids. And that a cisgender woman's refusal to participate in this system somehow means she's not mentally fit to make that choice for herself. And she needs to wait till later just to be sure. The, what? So apparently, yeah, apparently I try to go without ranting, but I, I can't, <laughs> I can't help it. Um, yeah. And I've, I've told my daughter this, I'm like at a certain point, people will start asking you when you're gonna get married, if you're dating someone, when you're going to have kids, why you haven't had kids yet, you're going to have to start answering those or you're not going to have to start answering them. You're going to start hearing them from people who um, think your value and your role in life is attached to procreation and men partic in particular. If you want them, fine. If you don't, there shouldn't be a social structure in place to make it possible for you to have them if you don't want them. Yeah. Sad and infuriating. Infuri infuriating. Words. I got them. I've got them. Okay. So we're going to talk. My other piece of good news I'll just save till next week since I apparently forgot to put the photos in there. Um, and blurred news is a little... Uh, did anybody attend any of the um, the Comic Con this past uh, weekend? I kept like I saw a couple of pieces, but I really just kept forgetting. Like if you're not there, again, my brain shut off completely. Friday at like five five thirty, my brain was like bye bye. <laughs> it hasn't talked to me since. Um. Did any of, yeah, uh, you missed panels, didn't attend. Exactly, without, like, when it's face-to-face -face rogue, um, um, once you became aware of it, it was there, Cross, but um, rogue, like, Comic-Con is usually something you plan around. Like, you take either days off to either travel or you go. <laughs> To have everything virtual, like I just, I completely, I completely missed it. Um, yeah. So it, it sounds like most of us um, didn't, uh, didn't make it. You know, I wonder if I'll check out some of the videos. Um, CES, help, help cross. What is that? What does that mean? CES. I don't remember. Um, Consumer Electronics Show. Thank you, Tig. What would I do without you? It's definitely not no stuff. Like, period, in general. Um, yeah, a lot of things are virtual. Last time I talked about the DC fandom thing. Um, where new stuff gets shown. Thank you, Gross. <laughs> I kind of been, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so everything is going virtual, but it doesn't necessarily, I thought like it would have mass increased viewership. I intended to go to some of the panels but like you get caught like reading a book or binge watching something because that's totally what you need to be doing with your life and you just forget. 
gotta have that shirt. Which shirt now? Tech genius. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. Okay, so nobody went to the Comic Con. Bye, guy. Keep. We'll be here. Um. Okay, so I have mixed feelings about this next part. I'm excited because it is um, <laughs> with the baby picture. <laughs> Y'all are not putting my baby picture on a T-shirt. No. Um. That's not happening, Tony. So I have y'all heard of Lovecraft Country, the HBO series that's going to be coming out. Okay, I'm pulling up my notes again. So tell me if I get muted. Nope, not gonna happen. I do not give y'all permission to do that. Um, so I'm excited if uh, Peel is one of the producers, he's not the director. I didn't see a producer, obviously, and I didn't go digging for it. Um, so, Peel is the um, one of the producers. Nope, nope, pie, nope, not gonna happen. Um, so, Lovecraft Country is a novel written by. I know people's names. Matt Ruff. Written, uh, published in 2016 by Matt Ruff. Um, and it is written to follow a black family and their experience. Um, it's a horror, horror novel, right? And so it's going to be a horror series on HBO. So, no, it... So they, it appears to reference Lovecraft, obviously, but it doesn't, it doesn't, yeah, it, it doesn't go that route. But my skepticism, um, my skepticism comes from, this may be one of the very few times that a, or maybe, no, maybe not. I don't know. It's just, okay, so the novel's written by a white male Matt Ruff. Um, the reviews suggest some of the reviews are positive. Some of them are like, you know, you're right to be skeptical because he's writing the black experience, particularly in relation to Jim Crow. Right. And the horror interracial and supernatural, apparently that comes with that. Um, so I don't know. Like I have, I, I want to read it. Um, but I also have a healthy, I think, skepticism of, of being aware that his affliction as a white male, his mental affliction that comes with being white and male in the U S um, what that will do to the characters in their story. But that said, the cast looks absolutely awesome for the series. Um, like it just, yeah, it looks awesome. Um, hopefully everything goes well with that because everything is getting delayed now. Uh, but yeah, so I, it doesn't seem like y'all have heard uh, much about it. Yeah. Like you can, mm, again, like, the reviews weren't of the book itself, not of the series, but the book itself, the reviews did not seem, um, to, they, they seemed okay with it. Hold on. I'm pulling up another screen. So if it mutes me, let me know. <laughs> Stream labs. Um, cause I'm going to see if I can find the, author or director real quick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm going to stop calling it Kanye and I'm going to call it Pied.
Okay, now I'm a, even more concerned. I don't know. Hey, L. Yeah, Michelle Obama does have a podcast now or is coming out with a podcast. Um so that's great. So there's another reason to be concerned about this. Hold on, let me make sure before I I say it out loud on the streams. So the producers include Jordan Peele, of course, Misha Green, J.J. Abrams, and Ben Steph Stevenson. But I don't see the director. Who the hell is the director? Is J.J. Abrams really directing? I'm telling you, it does it every time. Um, it does it every time I pull up something else. OBS does not like to be left untended, apparently. <sighs> okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you for letting me know, Tig. I was trying to find out who the... I, I, I really like the trailer. I like the casting. I want to know who's directing. I'm checking, I'm checking. He's <laughs> same. Okay, so it has multiple directors. Good Lord. Okay, so it looks like they're going to be rotating through. Okay, Daniel Sackheim is one of the directors. Not Black. I keep going back to check it cross to make sure. I don't know. So I'm I'm concerned. Jan Demange. He's French. He's doing one of the episodes. Anyway. I'm concerned. But we will see. Like I'm, I'm willing to watch it a time or two. Uh, I'm going to trust a little bit that Jordan Peele wouldn't put his name behind something that was too off. Um. <laughs> wow. Wow. I have been preempted for Michelle Obama. I guess there's worse things to be preempted for. Whatever. What? Ever. Um, okay, let me make sure I did this right. Hold on. Um. Oh, yes, I am editing on the fly. I told y'all my brain is not is not down with the quickness right now. Like you take some time off work and suddenly you don't know. Uh, I think I, I hope, I hope, but you know, yeah. Okay. So let's flip over. Um, hold on. Oh, I forgot I attached this here. Tech genius. 
I can remember all the things. Um. <laughs> yes, that's what we'll call it, that I need an executive assistant. So thank you for the follow. Was it Jenkin? Jenkin B4. Uh, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Um, so my tech genius status was validated by none other than LeVar Burton. Thank you. Thank you. He tweeted about his struggles now that everything is remote doing his podcasts from his house. And he has, let's be honest, significantly better equipment than I do. Yes, my brain is not down with the quickness. <laughs> um, so, yes, validated by LeVar Burton, he said, recording my podcast from home these days has been a master class in problem solving. So from now on, my tech genius status is all about problem solving. And that's what I do. I solve problems. Welcome back, Geiki. You're just in time to hear me talk about how LeVar Burton validated my existence and my status as a tech genius because we're both tech geniuses. Yep, LeVar Burton, y'all. Y'all see it. Y'all see it. He understands. <laughs> I do. I hit unmute. I put this host, you are not here. Pie. I put all the things, I make the things do things. What? I play music in the background. See, Cr Cross understands. Pie's just a hater. That's all. Pie's just a hater. Sure. Okay. Y'all ready for like my major. <laughs> Yes, I hit unmute. What? Fuck what you heard. Tech genius. <laughs> Haters. Okay. Y'all. Today. Okay, so. <laughs> Watch out damn right um so y'all know Jordy LaForge himself yes validation all in my life like I don't need y'all to validate me LeVar Burton is my homie um okay so y'all know that like maybe a couple uh, like two three weeks ago I joined the Twitters right um Y'all should totally follow me. That's what I want for my birthday. Y'all follow me on the Twitters. How do, what is my acronym? And priestess and empress of all that is. That is hilarious. I hate OBS. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say. Y'all know I talk with my hands. When am I gonna mute it? It no, I saw I saw Tig. It's just the time delay. I saw Tig tell me jump right in there as soon as she heard. Um 
No, you're not. I unmuted. We're good. Uh, so yes, I am on the Twitters and apparently I'm going to do that again because I just find that absolutely hilarious that I have. <laughs> that is so funny. Oh my goodness. Candy, you are my goddess. Thank you. That is awesome. Um, that is hilarious. Yes. So I'm, I've been trying because I do want to leave Facebook, but that means I need to find another addiction to replace it with, right? We can't just leave a void in your life. That would be too much. Yay, Kaiki. Thank you. So I tell you that to let you know that I have been getting acclimated, learning how to do it. My daughter has been a great tutor in this process. Shout out to Shay. Um, and y'all this week I tweeted, uh, retweeted. Y'all remember I talked about, uh, Victor Laval's the destroyer, right? Victor Laval is this amazing writer and he did this amazing comic books, short series, it's six issues, five or six issues, something like that. Um, he responded to my tweet, y'all. What the fuck? Victor Laval responded to my tweet. I am now best friends with Victor Laval. Because that's how Twitter works, right? That's totally how the Twitter works. So here is my screenshot. <laughs> here is my screenshot. Y'all can't read it. That's fine. Go to my Twitter. Y'all can y'all can see it there. <laughs> We're besties. It's a thing, Geiki. I said he did the damn thing. And he was like, I appreciate that. I was like, cool. We're friends. He didn't follow me back, but we're not bothering with the details. That That's irrelevant. I don't need, I just need him to talk to me. And he did. And so... I just, that was my first interaction with a famous person. <laughs> yes, I, I live to um, inspire the masses to go on the Twitters and learn how to twit. <laughs> oh man. So I was so excited. Yeah, y'all just don't know. I was so excited. I was like, oh my God, he talked to me. It's like passing somebody that you like super famous in real life. Don't be a hater, Geiki. <laughs> you see? You see what y'all not gonna be able to let LeVar Burton respond to me one day. Patrick Stewart? What? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, I just wanted to share that with y'all because it's awesome. Yes, Pi and Beyonce stole my thunder. That's what Pi does. She steals thunder. Okay. Um, thank y'all for coming with me on that journey. Um, yeah. Yeah. Maybe. You know, something like that. Y'all could have Acacio Cortez tweet me. That would be okay too. I mean, you know, Nettie Okorfor. Speaking of which, I follow her. She could be my friend too. I tried to get her. So Nettie Okorfor is the author of LaGuardia that we see right there. Um, I'm already Twitter famous, Cross. Like, did you not hear the part where Victor Laval responded to me? I'm already Twitter famous. Like, I, I only have 29 followers. 
I am Twitter famous. That's all I needed. <laughs> I'm already Twitter famous. Um, right? Let's not get it twisted. Okay, orator. <laughs> That's a funny autocorrect rogue. Um, so, oh, Pi, you missed my whole, Le um, Victor Laval. Um, so, uh, she's the author of this and I bring it up in particular because, uh, LaGuardia won an award this week. So I want to talk about that. Um, yep. V O D. Um, but I tried because she, uh, Nettie Corfo wrote this book. Uh, I think I talked about it. Uh, book of Phoenix. I can't remember. I've talked about so many things at this point. Um, but she wrote book of Phoenix and I've used that book in my class on medical experimentation history. And I, w I was like, I work for an uh, educational institution. I'll see if she'll Skype with my class, right? Y'all her speaking fee. Hello, Kenobi. OG one Kenobi. <laughs> That's funny. Um, <laughs> no problem, Rogue. No problem. Welcome, welcome, Kenobi. Um, unless you prefer OG1. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so I reached out to her to see if uh, she would like speak to my class, right? They were like, her, not even her, her people, right? <laughs> her people. We're like, it's $35,000 for her to speak to your class. If she's going to do Skype, it needs to be an auditorium full of students. So my class did not talk to Nettie Accor for that semester, <laughs> wherever. <laughs> like, what? Um, yeah, I mean, and she's totally worth 35 K like I am not begrudging her that get paid, sis, get paid. It just won't be like, me. like, do you know, in order to bring a poet, I brought, um, and I'll talk about her work, but I brought a poet, Dominique Christina, and I want to pay people what they're worth. Right. So I brought a poet to come speak to my class. Um, and her fee plus flight and everything, um, her fee was just $1,500, right? Much more affordable. Do you know how many departments I had to get to co-donate? Like I had the English department, the history department, the political science. Like I had all these different people donating to put into the fund to bring her. Do you know, I would have to sell both kidneys and a lung to get the idea core for <laughs> to campus like what who and again she get your money sis get your money um she totally valid she should ask for everything she is worth more women should i just you know i can't because I work in education. 35,000. <laughs> like what? Whew. Okay. Yeah. Nope. Wasn't a thing. But, 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 but I can still like read her work. So the score on that, right? Um, nobody can stop me from doing that. Uh, so this book, LaGuardia, is a comic she's working on. I think I told y'all, I mentioned before her working on Shuri, um, the, uh, Black Panther spinoff, if that would be appropriate to call it. <clears throat> yes. More women should. Um, so, um, LaGuardia just won the 2020 Eisner award, which is like 
the Grammys of writing and whatnot. You know, you want to know what my stipend is, Cross? My stipend to bring in speakers, like our guaranteed speaker fee is $100. That's what my, my, from the piece, and that's more than some people get. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I have, I have been fortunate that I have had, um, like there's an author who writes, um, kind of kids, young adult fiction, and some poetry and she was willing to Skype with me for free. That was fantastic. Um, like, so I've been able to get people to talk to my classes, uh, working within that budget, you know, doing a little hustle, but I, I can't afford Nettie Accord for, Oh, the Guardia. Right. Um, so it's a winner this year of the 2020 Eisner award for best graphic album reprint. Um, it's through Bird, Berger, Berger, Berger Books, which uh, works through Dark Horse Comics. It's an imprint of Dark Horse Comics. <laughs> no, no. Uh, nope. $100 is not enough to bring Media Core for to, <laughs> to any, anybody's school. That won't even pay for her to open her door. She was like, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Um, <laughs> accuracy, so much accuracy. So, uh, LaGuardia by Nettie Okorafor. The art is by Tana Ford. The main character is a uh, future Noir for, uh, I even looked up how to pronounce it. Chukwe Buka. Uh, so Future is a Nigerian American physician. She's also pregnant when this whole thing starts. Um, who's she's Nigerian American, so she has um, kind of like um, kind of like Nedia Korfor talks about herself. She has dual citizenship in Nigeria and America in the U.S. Um, she's lived abroad in Nigeria for a few years, I think six, and is now returning to the U S and bringing a friend. So in this universe, in this world, um, it's it kind of a modern take on immigration. So where humanity now we have is a thing. Now we have extraterrestrial visitors and intergalactic entities, species, and humans now all live on earth cohabitating like, like you would any, you know, like you would with anybody else, any other group. Right. Um, and when she comes back to the U S she's bringing a, an undocumented friend who happens to be from a plant species of some sort. Um, that um, she brings this friend in illegally, right? Undocumented because their life is threatened in Nigeria. Um, and it's interesting, all of the alien species, all of the intergalactic visitors name, you know how immigrants often give themselves nicknames or tell they take pity and they shouldn't, but they take pity on our American tongue, right? To make it easier to call them by their names. So you'll see this a lot, um, with East Asian communities. Well, just Asian communities in general, African communities, um, where they will give you something to call them that is other than what their parents name them, right? Then it is other than what their birthright name is. The aliens in this comic book do the same thing, but they choose names like, um, 
laundry, surveillance, or payment. Like that's the names they give themselves. And her friend chose the name, let me as the first name, let me as the first name and then live. So it's let me live. Um, so you can't really see that. I don't like how small that is. Um, so, um, Hmm. I don't know why it's so small. We're going to have to talk about that. Okay. Um, but yeah, so, and the only place that these extraterrestrial beings can enter the U S is from LaGuardia airport in New York, right? Except it's LaGuardia intergalactic something or other, right? Um, still under construction. Apparently that's a thing for LaGuardia. Um, and so the story starts to go into effect with her trying to save the life of her friend, um, trying to save the life of her friend, uh, let me, and, um, then like we see in today's time, the U S issues a travel ban. Her grandmother is an attorney who is working to, it's strikingly similar. Uh, it's strikingly similar to what we deal with today with immigration and migrants moving from place to place. Migration has always been a thing in human history. It is not new just because you put up a border. Oh, speaking of borders, um, a little fact correction i saw that there was uh, hurricane hannah was attributed with knocking down the border wall fence i started looking into it and it turns out that was from a weather system in january so that was that was from like old video all the news people got it wrong <laughs> um but just fyi it wasn't in july it was in january that that video of the border wall getting knocked down which is still hilarious um, but it wasn't in July anyway. So I really enjoy. Yeah. And that that's fine. Talk about it, but you know, don't recast it as hurricane Hannah and new stuff. Um, so I really like LaGuardia. Um, I like the, I like the relevance. I like always love black figures. I always, um, pushing back against, and that's her friend. So that green vine around her is let me. <coughs> I'm just going to cough and die. That's all. <coughs> I got the Rona y'all. Okay. Um, so that's, uh, the first recommendation. And it won an Eisner Award. So, you know, win-win. <laughs> okay, so y'all know... <laughs> hey, I'm in my house. It's okay. It's okay. And I don't go around people. So, you know. Next up, y'all know I appreciate a good horror comic right? I introduce you to farmhand. This shit is creepy. Creepy as fuck. creepy. Creepy and therefore awesome. It is also written by a black author, Rob Gil Giliori. Galori. Y'all know I can't, I can't say the things. <clears throat> he wrote and drew it. Yes, more horror. Um, thank you. I agree. I like my bookshelf too. But it has an O in it. It's just Guillory. It's, no, it's G-U-I-L-L-O-R-Y. Doesn't the U mean something? Is it Guillory? I don't know. Rob Guillory. 
Okay. I wrote it down so I would, I would be right. <laughs> Uh, so he does the writing and the, and the art. The color is by Taylor Wells. <clears throat> but it's spelled, hold on, I'm going to put it in. That's how it's spelled. Like I have it. That's how it's spelled. See? That's how it's spelled. If French need to stop using, putting letters in their words, they don't, um, they don't use. That's, that's what I'm saying. They need to stop. There is no reason for all that extra if you're not even going to say them. Okay, French people, I know you've had your language for ever-ish. <clears throat> yeah, but right now we're talking about the French. <laughs> um, so... There you go, Rob. I'm gonna call you Rob. Um, so uh, this again is horror. I'm about to pull up my notes, so let me know if it mutes. Oh, okay, L. Real world experience, Guillory. It is. Um. So the very first issue. Of farmhand and this cover is actually the the graphic novel um, the the first volume it's not the first issue it's the first volume um, so the very first issue though starts with a brother and sister um, they're on a farm right it's nighttime uh, they've just stopped a wild animal from a uh, killing all of their their hens in the chicken coop um they they're like cleaning stuff up um the brother's fussing at the sister for leaving the um for leaving the uh like not patching the hole like she was supposed to um and as they're picking up like the the chickens that were killed they see in the ground an eye, alive, an eye staring up at them from in the ground, like buried and all you can see is the eye. Right? And the, um, they're like obviously freaking out And they start uncovering it because why not just run away? Um, they start uncovering it and it's, they realize it's alive and that it's their father. It's their father who is telling them to leave him alone. It has to be this way, leave him alone. The son touches the father's hand and the father starts growing, swallows the brother and sister up into the branches and vines, creating this really warped family tree. And then the main character, Zeke Jenkins, wakes up. Yeah. <laughs> so... That's how it starts. That's why I don't feel like that's a spoiler because that happens in like the first three pages, four, five, six, however long it takes them to freak the fuck out. Like, <laughs> I am not vegan, but I do love vegetables because vegetables are life. Um, so he wakes up. He, he wakes up. In this world that he inhabits... Uh, he then, by the way, takes his kids with his wife uh, to go visit the family farm, which has cultivated, his father designed and cultivated a new kind of stem cell, one that's adapted to, that can adapt to whatever tissue is needed. So um, if it's muscle, like heart, skin, whatever tissue is needed, it can adapt to that. Um 
that was then used to create the Jedediah seed. That's what it's called. This is a seed that can be planted in the ground. Stay with me. This is awesome. Um, I just realized like my camera is, oh Lord, hold on. I broke it. <laughs> why all right um i do put broccoli on my pizza <laughs> it was crooked i just realized it and then i needed to fix it and then i broke it but i fixed it what did lavar burton say problem solving i am a problem solver i do put broccoli on my pizza and it's the best and one of the most underrated um pizza toppings like with just mozzarella some pesto some tomato y'all don't know hater hater <laughs> yeah that's okay there's there's brain power up there y'all can handle it it's all right um okay so this Jedediah seed that right, it takes stem cell technology and can adapt it to whatever tissue, they've blended it with a seed. So it's a Jedediah seed that can be planted and it can grow into any kind of body part, organ, or whatever that might be needed. So we're talking about fully grown hands, arms, ears, kidneys, growing out of the ground on vines, growing on trees, bushes, just like a regular ass plant. What the fuck? What? Y'all. So this is the first part where um, you can, he see, he lifts the chicken <laughs> of course, Dig. Of course. You had to go there. Um, so you can see the eye peeking out of the ground at him. Um, and he note he realizes it's his dad. So there are like fields and think of greenhouses where um again it made the picture so small. No me gusta. Okay. Maybe I can fix that. Can I fix that real time? Um, let's see. Nope. Hold on. This one. Nope. Dang it. I can't. Okay. I'm not, I'm not going to tech genius this away. <laughs> right. So you can't see it because it's so freaking small within the frame. Um, but those are hands growing out. So what happens is like, you could just take the arm that was growing on the tree, pull it off like a piece of fruit and attach it to the, the shoulder stem or whatever. Right? Y'all, this is a trippy, 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 trippy novel. Nope. No lettuce. <laughs> yeah. Except the whole like society is behind him. Of course, there are protesters um, that, you know, call him the devil and, you know, all of that. But science is behind him. They are like, they're scientists just growing things like it's normal. And they see themselves as saving, um, helping to save humanity, right? Y'all, you gotta pick this one up. I think, no, okay. Yeah. Um, Y'all gotta pick this one up. If you like horror, it's like 
um, it follows the sun and his his navigation of this space. I'm not going to tell y'all too much. Um, but yeah, your reflex is to burn that shit to the ground. But in this world, like it's it's OK. They have protesters just like you do now for stem cell research and all of that. Um, but they're kind of looked at as the fringe. Some so fucked up stuff. So much fucked up stuff happens. Okay. Yay. For that. Um, oh, look at that. It's almost out of time. I don't have a fiction book for y'all. I just had those two comic books for today because I wanted to talk to y'all. So like the whole first 30, 45 minutes was us just chilling. Um, what I do next, I'm kind of undecided about. Um kind of very undecided. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, so it's been, um, I do, I do have poetry. I could save that book for next, next week. It's one of my favorite poetry books of all time. I know I say that a lot. But I thought for my birthday week, for those of you who stuck around, that I might read one of my own poems. What do y'all think? Oh my God. Okay. Okay. The first thing, um, deep space. Oh, yay. Tell me. Yay. Dig it out of storage. Yes. Dig all the comics out of storage and give them to me. Yay. That's happy birthday. Um, so my name is Kalia. Uh, this is a blurt of this and that. I am the blurt of this and that. I am part of the Dicey Amazons cohort of women. Uh, queer, non-binary people of black and people of color. B-I-P-O-C. B-I-M-P-O-C? I've seen. It gets longer. Kind of like the LGBT started and then, you know, adds on. Which is good. Visibility is good. Um, that is so fantastic, Tony. Uh, so I'm excited about that now. The rest of y'all are welcome to dig in y'all's like crates for random stuff you might have that you don't necessarily book, you know, book related that you might not need anymore. Okay. Let me close. Cause I did not, I wasn't sure I was going to do it. So I did not, um, create a slide for it. So, um, maybe we'll just go back to, um, I need a still to work in there. Turn the music down. Okay. I can do that. No, cause I only give books that I already have Pi. Um, I can't read it. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand what's happening. Um, so I turn the music down. Hopefully that's, um, okay. I will give y'all, I don't know. I will let y'all vote on, um, no, cause I have those books. I give books that I already have. I don't give books that I don't have multiple copies of. Um, could break the seal. We'll see. We'll see. Oh no. Now you got me all whatever. Okay. So because I wasn't sure I was going to be brave and do this, I didn't choose ahead of time. So, uh, y'all are going to help me pick because 
That's what you do on social media is ask other people for validation. Facts, ma. Facts. Okay. Um, so options are pull my rope for Prince, um, nearing the one year anniversary of his passing. I do have a couple on like crushing and love and all of that. Um, I have one on, I got some on parenting. I've got, um, every poet from new Orleans has a, um, <clears throat> it has a Katrina poem. I have, you know, that, but that's going way back. I have not written anything very recently, so I'm hoping stepping out there maybe triggers something for me. So let me know what y'all are in the mood for. Like, do you want something that fits my, whatever you might think my personality is? Um, uh, I mean, I have a little bit of everything. I have, yeah. What's m my mood? Prince. <laughs> I, I'll do that one for you, L. Um, but I, I want to do, I don't know. I'm terrified, Tig. That's what I am. So how about we start with Prince just to warm up my, my insides. <clears throat> and then we'll see if I survive that. Maybe I'll read another one. Um, uh, so his, what, second to last album, third, hold on, second to last, I think it was his second to last album, um, Artificial Age. He has this song on there called Breakdown. Um, yeah, so Tig, my mood is terrified. That's, that's my mood right now. Um, but he had... This uh, album released in 2014, Artificial Age, Art Official Age, third to last. I couldn't, I couldn't remember because you know he always pushed out stuff like so fast, so fast, so much. Um, I don't know what to tell you, Color Me Taco. If we've never had a conversation about books and you've never indicated an interest in actually reading them, but if there is a book that you are interested in reading, we can talk about it. Oh, I forgot Hit and Run was a two-parter. My bad. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you, L. See, L is... Uh, He's better with information than me, and he's a, a Prince, Prince fan. Okay, no more avoiding the inevitable. I said I was going to do this. I'm live. Nobody's going away, so that means this is what it's going to be. All right. <clears throat> okay, so this is called Breakdown. For Prince, uh, inspired by the song Breakdown. You broke me down to the atom, splitting the vacant spaces of my heart I'd save for memories, shared with grandkids on stoops, filled with plants and dust from the hours of love settled there. I was aware of temporal limitation, but you were always my exception, the one to defy decay and stay here. I needed you here. Perhaps it was fear, leaving me blinded to the potential that you were not a living forever. Too late, I realized I never asked to keep you. Instead, I assumed our wants would collide in a perfect circumstance, like they did in my dreams, but such things are never meant for mere mortals. Yet you were never so human as when I made you God. Applauding every breath, I handed you all of my hope, my growth, and you didn't even know. 
You were my journal of notes I used to go through, the end that redefined every word I took for granted, every word. It is better, they say, to have loved and lost, but my guess is they never had to lose you. That's the breakdown. For Prince. Yeah. So that's, that's Prince. Y'all are sweet. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, <laughs> Devious, you made it back. You made it back just in time. Um, yeah, like he somehow got out. I'm very, very practical, realistic, pragmatic. Prince somehow existed outside of that, of that space of my brain. Like I really was not prepared for the end of his life, like at all. Um, I, I was not prepared. I like it affected me physically. I was uh, dating uh, my girlfriend at the time and she had no idea. And just one day I'm doing laundry and like break down <laughs> while I'm putting towels in the washer. Uh, I made myself physically sick. Um, Prince for me was just outside of this, the regular human scope of being. Um, and you know, that's like, I shouldn't have put him there. Uh, but yeah, that's my, um, that's my poem for Prince. And I don't, y'all, hold on. Let me make sure I'm not going to be muted. Um, but I have, um, you can see his eye looking out at me. So that's one of my uh, tattoos. Yay, body art, body mod, all of that. Okay. Um. <laughs> yes, just like the eye on the ground. Prince is watching all of us, as he should. <laughs> if, if you've seen that album cover, or I think it's an album cover, but there's a very famous picture, like, well, all pictures of Prince, I think, are famous. But there's one particular picture with a black background. And that's what this the eye is taken from. He's watching. Okay. Um, so uh, it is nine o'clock. Do y'all want to hear one more before we go for the evening? Or we can just call it a night. If y'all are about to go to sleep, um, we can call it a night. <laughs> Uh, because this, you know, that's okay. Geiki, look. Um, yeah. He, he was like, his side eye is who, that's the, that's my level of judginess. That's my goal is to be at the level of the prince side eye. That is my goal. He was the best at doing that. Um, and that's my goal. The people have spoken. Y'all, I don't know why I ask, because whatever. Okay, so um, I don't know. I don't, I don't really have a... I, I, all, most of the recent poems I have... Um, <laughs> Most of the recent poems I have are based on prompts that other people gave me. So I have um, somebody, people have sent me songs like, um, anybody know Cody Chestnut, that song, No One Will, I wrote a poem based on that. Um, I wrote a poem, somebody gave me the prompt of crush. And so I wrote a poem on that. Like you're getting one more. One more. That's it. Um, so 
I don't know. I don't, I can, I don't even know how to pick one. Um, random pick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See, this is why you can't put stuff on the internet. People don't be reading and paying attention. Y'all just be saying shit. Um, okay. Okay, so let's... I'm being vulnerable. It's my birthday. I'm going to read something that people don't often equate me with because I'm very... Um, I will write my crush poem. I will read my crush poem. Hold on, as soon as I find it. Yeah, I will read my crush poem. One with 10. <laughs> read one with 10 letters in the title. Oh my Lord, 10 letters. I didn't see that before I picked crush and then you know, Rallarac says crush. Um, maybe some, maybe, maybe next year. <laughs> maybe next year. Okay, so this was not inspired by any one person. This was a convergence of all of the crush energy I had at that point in time. Y'all can hear what you want to, but the stream is going dark as soon as I finish this. Are we going to raid? We're going to raid somebody, which reminds me I need to pay attention to who's live right now. So again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving me your time. I really appreciate it. My name is Kalia. Check us out. Um, Monday and Wednesdays, she's been on the Ghost of Shishima recently, but Pi, Bung Fu Pi, um, <laughs> talking about y'all in the poem I didn't know none of y'all when I wrote this so nope Ghost of Tsushima um, she's been on it and that game is amazing absolutely amazing to watch and apparently to play yes all the tears all the feels all the emotions so Pi is going to be doing that tomorrow at 7 central um, and then Thursday oh Thursday this week is Parallels um, me and Pi co-host uh, Parallels, where we look back to at civil rights, act, I won't say civil rights, but activists from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and we listen to them and pull forward who we're going to be, um, how we can take what they've, what conversations they were having then, and how it still applies to 21st century issues that we're still dealing with. So that's Thursday at 7, 7 Central. My brain will be there for that. Uh, and then Friday at 8 Central, uh, Candy will be doing, um, what's it? Star Wars? Knights of the something? It's KOTAR. That's the acronym. <laughs> Y'all tell me everything every single time. I always want to say Knights of the Round Table, but that's not it because that's like King Arthur and all of that. Old Republic. Damn it. Okay. I knew that. I totally knew that. I remember things. Uh, so she'll be playing Knights of the Round uh, Republic <laughs> one day. Um, Star Wars Friday at 8. And then this um, Sunday will be uh, I think we're doing community games because we just did D&D. &D. So maybe we'll do the bomb exploding thing. Maybe we'll do jackpot game. Maybe we'll do dicey debates. Who knows? Um, so that that's our community thing on Sunday at 11 Central. Okay. So hopefully you come back and yes, dicey debates. Watch us debate the inane and impractical and... Papa John's is racist. Okay. So this is Crush. The Crush. <clears throat> my heart felt you before my mind did. My body swayed to a comfortable groove, infused with clues of something I mused before I knew it was you. Then I saw you. 
staring at me. Promising raindrops of thought getting caught in between wet spots on sheets. It would be incomplete of me to confess so lush a crush without marking a line in the dust of where I am and where I could be. Hesitancy habitually hinders heartbeats, but I'd be willing just once to let you touch me discreetly, brushing past between stacks of linguistic lingering, please. Act like you've known me for centuries. I'm the only thing between you and the door, the table and the floor, unable to ignore the tendency of your eyes to call me, moaning. Baby, meet me here. Kisses there. Listless air electrifies as you identify parts of me. Ritually tantric, like sutra, suture my psyche into the library of things hidden like Alexandria's mysteries. But then, I don't even know if you need me. It seems you'll just walk past me, leaving me completely crushed. Well, okay, that's it. <laughs> that's it. We're going to raid now because I can't take y'all nowhere. <laughs> y'all are funny. It will never happen again. Um, but yeah. I used to be a poet once upon a time. All right, so let's see. You know what, since Omar came to visit today, I think I think we'll visit uh, and crash on Omar's. Um... <laughs> oh God. Yes, look for clips. That's the that's thing. Um, so... Hold on, I can do this. It's raid. Okay, round two next week. Um, no. I fixed it. I fixed it. Um, yes, hesitancy habitually hinders heartbeats. Um, so thank you again <laughs> for coming. We're going to raid Omar from Queens. He's playing Legend of Zelda. I first met him yesterday through Zadiebug's stream. Um, so we're going to return the favor and, uh, Right, since he showed us love today. Um, thank you, Tony. Thank you. Um, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, uh, raid and thank you. It's been real. I'm gonna stop now because I'm gonna, yeah, shaking is a thing. All right. Hit us up on Discord if y'all wanna say hi. I'll put all the recommendations. Um, this. Uh, I'll put all the recommendations for this week in the Discord, uh, like I always do. All right, y'all. Um, I appreciate y'all. As always, you are welcome at our table. Bye, y'all.